Hello, this is Ed. Ed, it's you. Yes, it is. Hello. Ah, oh, yeah, I, I'm so excited. Thank you for uh, calling up. Is your show in like a few minutes or something here? It, it is. I'm sorry I didn't get you on time because I was watching the NFL uh, press conference and I was also writing some stuff. So you got me for a few minutes here. I wanted to keep my commitment to you. I'm on with you. Okay, thanks so much, Ed. I really appreciate it. So uh, let's jump right into it because I know you're very limited on time here. I don't want to go over. So uh, for people who don't know, uh, this all came about because uh, I did a segment where I, I criticized your position on Syria and ISIS in the sense that you seem to be open to the idea of uh, boots on the ground. So You have to be. You have to be open to that, Kyle. You, you, you never know where this is going to go. We're talking about Americans getting their heads cut off. We're talking about a terrorist organization that seems to be funded by some other superpowers on the globe. And we're, we're in a real tough spot. This, this is not Iraq of 2003. This is not the, the Gulf War of, of the early 90s under George H.W. Bush. This is a totally different situation. Terrorism has evolved globally. And so I, I think that putting a coalition together is crucial. What the president is doing right now is that he is, he is not committing to boots on the ground because he has to hold this coalition together. If the coalition knows that the United States is going to put boots on the ground, they're going to say, hey, we don't have to do anything. The Americans are going to go in there and do it. So this is a, a real balancing act to make sure that we get it right against this horrible group. So uh, let me ask you, in your opinion, what do you think is the the ideal plan to combat ISIS as of right now? That is the key. There is no ideal plan. There's a lot of bad options. There's a lot of bad scenarios. You know what I did? I went back and I did a story on the senators who voted against going into Iraq. I talked to Tom Daschle recently. I've talked to Byron Dorgan. I've talked to Kent Conrad. Uh, these are three guys, and there's a bunch of them that are going out of the Senate right now that voted no on going into Iraq. To a T, they all say this is a totally different scenario as terrorism and the fight on it has evolved. I don't want boots on the ground. I don't want that. I don't want Americans to go back in because all I know the Republicans are going to do is come back and go after all the Social Security, Medicare, Medicaid, and they're going to look for cuts to pay for this crap. So this is there are no good options here. There are no good options. I was going through the Minneapolis airport this morning, and I ran into North Dakota Congressman Kevin Kramer. He's as conservative as you'll find. Kramer's up for re-election, as everybody else is, but he's a one-term congressman. He's a Tea Partier. I've, I've known him for a long time. We're on different sides of the, of the spectrum. He says there's no good options. He told his caucus, you've got to give the president what he's asking for because he's the commander-in-chief. Now, if you want to do more than that, that's a different discussion. But when it comes to national security, and that's what this is, a national security issue, you can't sit there and say we can't put boots on the ground. It's a tough place to be, but that's what the coalition's calling for now to hold it together. That's how I see it. So uh, my response to that is just very simply, my concern is if we do boots on the ground under almost any imaginable uh, situation, I think it would likely make the situation worse. And the reason I say that is largely based on, off of what we learned uh, under George W. Bush when we actually ended up creating more terrorists because of our presence in the Middle East and because every time we go in guns blazing, we kill so many civilians and then the populations get further radicalized. So I don't I don't disagree with that. I, I don't disagree with that. But there are no boots going on the ground right now, other than than trainers and and military uh, advisors. There are no combat troops that are going to be engaged here. I know exactly what you're saying. But this, as I said, this is not 2003 as I see it. Now, where I took issue with you and when I tweeted to you is that this doesn't make me any less liberal. This, this, this doesn't make MSNBC any less liberal. Uh, this, this is, I've talked to the most liberal people around, and they think that we've got to be behind the president on this because we don't know how, how dangerous this could be to America. Look what happened with Australia just a, a couple, within the last 48 hours. So uh, I, I think that 
labeling a situation on security is hard to do. I, you ha I have the very same concern you have, but we can't let it go unanswered, and we can't so, give it parameters. Right now it has parameters. It might not down the road if this doesn't work. We'd have to reevaluate it as a country, and I'd be, I might be right where you are. We have to see, see how ISIS – is ISIS going to be depleted by all of this action? Go ahead. See, I, I, I look at ISIS – Exactly like I look at Al Qaeda, who's taken over northern Mali right now, and they've basically set up Al Qaeda stand. I look at ISIS the same way I look at Boko Haram, who've taken over pockets of Nigeria and are kidnapping girls and holding hostages and murdering people. I look at ISIS the same way I look at Ansar al Sharia and al Nusra Front and al Shabaab, and literally the thousands of jihadist groups that are out there. And my concern is that. What we're seeing right now, I think it's going to be viewed historically, if Obama goes through and continues to act more and more hawkish on this, I think history is going to judge it as, oh, we took a year or two years off of the George W. Bush debacle, and then we continued it. And then, God forbid, we get President Marco Rubio or President Marco, uh, 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 Paul Ryan in there. What's going to happen? They're going to use this justification to continue to do drone strikes in Pakistan, Yemen, and Somalia, and to continue to further press in the Middle East and breed radicalization against the U.S. I think we're a bigger target because we end up getting so involved over there. Okay, so you think that if we don't do anything to control ISIS, that they'll just back off? They, won't, they are not politically driven. They are religiously driven. And this is the unspoken dynamic that, that's hard to get to and hard to resolve. Uh, and the president has even talked about this. There's no God that is going to support what these people are doing. It's a tough call. There are no easy options. Uh, okay, so okay. – we, And I, I gave a commentary on TV, and I think you missed this. Uh, are we now outsourcing our security to Syrian rebels? No, I agree with you on that 100%. Yeah, is, yeah is, no, you're right. Is that, is, that what we're, is that what we're doing? Yeah, that, we are that's now stupid. Going to, we, are, we are now, and I, and I was kind of disappointed that, you, you, you know, you got after me, which is great. That's America. But let's be clear here. We, I think this is dangerous that we are going to arm people in the Middle East. We don't know who we're arming. Or we, we don't know their loyalty. And there's no end game to it. Right. And, Actually. Uh, I, so I, I think that there are a lot of ominous things here. We all know no. that somebody's got to cut in somebody's freaking head off. We can agree on that. And so, I, I think that this is going to – the superpower is going to have to come to the table and say, okay, what, what, whose side are you on, how you want to handle this? This is going to evolve to a Putin-Obama face-to-face big time, I think. So on the issue of not arming, I'm 100% with you because there were a few articles that broke last week, and it, they just validated something we've been saying for a long time, that there are factions of the FSA, the Free Syrian Army – that are actually very close to ISIS, and they supposedly brokered a peace deal. Now, the president said well, that's now, not now, true. Now, 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 Kerry said in a meeting yesterday in front of the uh, Senate Foreign Relations Committee that that was false information. But I don't the believe that, to be honest. I, I, don't I don't believe, believe it either. I, that's why okay. I'm the one that asked Barbara Boxer on TV. Boxer was talking about the interview that I had with her on, on the Ed Show. She said I right. was asked a question, you know. And, and so she took that question through me and, and, and posed it to Kerry. Kerry's answer was, that's false information. That's a quick, easy answer, but we don't know. And I think our intel on the ground is a little flimsy right now. Look, I think okay. this is a good first step by the president. Uh, I think that you can't close the door on any options. We don't know where this is going to go. No one so, wants to jump into this stuff. So real quick, Ed, I just want to give you – I want to get your response to what my solution is. You could tell me what you think, and that'll be the last word. I'll give you the last word. Sure, here's, sure. Uh, here's my solution. There was a great article in the World Post about a week ago or a week and a half ago where yeah. they basically outlined that the the real solution is going to be from the Sunni Ba'athists. So the Ba'athists, for people who don't know, they're the secular Sunnis who were the supporters of Saddam Hussein. And as bad of people as they are, they're less bad people than ISIS. So, for example, they released a statement saying we denounce religious this killings. All comes and, from the deba this all comes from the de-ba'athification right. of Saddam's exactly army. Exactly right. right. Exactly right. And about uh, more than half of the the leaders in ISIS right now are actually Sunni Ba'athists, and that's not a permanent alliance. So to me, what I get out of that, and the article lays this out well too, is if you break up Iraq into essentially Kurdistan, 
a, a Sunni stand and a Shiite stand, for lack of better names, then you've taken away the common enemy, which is the Shiites, uh, to the Sunnis. And then you'll have the Ba'athists turn on ISIS well, and build a future. Okay. All right, you, you're, you're playing a lot of different scenarios here, uh, Kyle, and I, I respect that. I understand where we, it could evolve into anything. I went face-to-face with President Clinton in Iowa on Sunday. I asked him this. He says it's got to be a political solution when the Shiites and the Sunnis realize that living next to one another and not butchering one another, it gives us hope for a solution. That's really where we're at right now. We've got to get an inclusive government. The wrong guy in Maliki, he was exclusive and not inclusive. It pissed off a lot of people secularly over there, and now we've got a, a civil war that's nasty and turned into some nasty terrorism. That's where we are. Buddy, got to run. Good to talk. We'll do it again. I appreciate it. All right, Ed, it. Thanks a lot. I really appreciate it. You bet. Have a good show. Bye-bye.